In total, there's 18,000 segments, which, uh, when built, composes 3,000 meters of tunnel. All of the segments are now on site, and uh, just being the final hundred are being prepped, ready for installing in the tunnel. And at the moment, our best cycle time is 17 minutes and uh, up to 31 meters per day. The job's going extremely well, uh, happy with progress to date, very smooth operation and the team's done a fantastic job. Been working on Lovitz for about 22 years, all over the UK and in Europe, mostly in Holland and Germany. Came out 14 months ago for this project. Uh, I like what I've seen, I'll be stopping. I won't be going back to the UK, I'll work future projects with McDowell. It's great. Well, I started working for McConnell when I was about 16, still at school. I uh, used to work the weekends and school holidays, and I've been working full-time now for about four years. Uh, it was study on the side, just about finished the study, and I've been all around New Zealand with McConnell Dow, and it's been good fun, good people, and yeah, good times. Okay, we're setting up uh, for our precast units for our uh, cascade. It goes down the shaft, and after we finish each unit, we weigh approximately 50 tonne and there's 24 units to make. We, we've been here from day one. We created the site, got everything ready for the uh, tunnelers. So yeah. yeah, it's been a really good job, great. Good bunch of guys and uh, good management, good safety systems in place and everything, you know? So it's been really good. Initially we had to make pipes up uh, for laying as the marine pipe portion of the outfall, um, which we did out in Kaiawa. The reason we ended up reasonably far from the project in Myrangi Bay was simply the size. We had some long pipes that were almost half a kilometer long, and there was just no available space anywhere closer than that. So that's why we settled out there, and it was actually quite a pleasant environment for everyone to work in, as it turns out. The HDP pipes we used aren't made in New Zealand. We ended up having to buy them from a fabricator in Thailand, uh, who ultimately was also selected to weld them up into the long strings. Um, they come out of the production plant in 12 meter sections, and we want them to be much, much longer to speed up the installation process in the sea. Um, so in Kiowa, we um, welded them into lengths of 450 meters, roughly. The welders brought over a welding machine, which is essentially just a big hot metal plate, and they melt the ends of the pipes and then pull them together, which fuses it into an entire length. And from there, we can pressure test them, and we just stored them temporarily in Kiowa. There's a lagoon inshore of the bay, which, we, which is open to the sea. So we stored them in the lagoon, and once we are ready for them on site, we just hold them up using a tugboat over that piece of land and then out into the sea. Pulling the, the pipes out of Kaiawa, um, it's about a 70 nautical mile journey. It takes about 10 hours for the tug to tow it around from there. And the Firth of Thames is quite a shallow body of water, so when the tides are mid-cycle, the water whips through there very, very quickly. So we had to make sure that we pulled the pipe through that exposed beach section at essentially either the top of the tide or the bottom of the tide. And um, what we tried to do there was to essentially pull at the top of the tide. So of course the tide would help us pull it out of the bay as we, uh, as we came around to the site. So whether that high tide happened to be at four in the morning or one at night, we would set up and essentially pull those pipes out of the lagoon, over the beach, and into the firth, around to site. So, by the time the pipes were finished in Kaiawa, the barge had been prepared 
for the pipeline operation and uh, we were ready to start. You wouldn't know to look at it now, but behind us here at Morangi Bay, there's been a huge amount of work gone in the past six months. We've managed to lay over two kilometers of 1,600mm pipe. We've managed to sink a, a shaft over 30 meters deep right here on shore. Backfilled the area, left it as, uh, left as we found the site. And it's been a huge effort from all the guys, phenomenal. Uh, we liaised with uh, Harbour Control all the way through. Um, designated routes, designated times, Launch operation was very well controlled by the guys down there. And then once it came to site here, we broke it down to two sections. First section was bringing the pipe up onto the deck of the barge itself. What you don't appreciate is all the temporary works that were involved in. In, uh, in allowing us to pull it onto the deck and fix the ballast blocks. What well, was a very simple procedure, in essence, uh, there's a lot of thought gone into it by, uh, by the technical department. Sorting all the, um, the engineering, and the mechanisms, everything that allows us to go from doing a 400 meter pipe in two days to get all the blocks in, to with a bit of routine and, and uh, familiarity with the guys, we were able to place up to 70 blocks in a single shift, essentially full, a full pipe string. So that knocked the whole process down. We had originally allowed four to five days for the towing, the installation and the sinking. And towards the end, we were getting it done in three days. Five pipe strings were, were put in extraordinarily quick as far as I'm concerned and without incident, both environmentally or from a safety point of view. There was no major issues at all. Um, we were commended from locals with regards to the, uh, the speed which was done, the minimum impact. So it was a huge effort by the guys involved. There was a lot of hours put in, uh, a lot of teamwork, which was the key to it really, because with all the all the engineering, all the design works, that, that, fabulous. But without the people to install it and the, uh, the camaraderie and the effort, we'd still be out there now putting the blocks in. The pipe sinking process um, was fairly simple. Basically, you had a floating tube of plastic full of air so that it floated. And what we would do is pull on that slightly, which caused the inshore end to dip down underneath the surface of the water, creating a low point. And we'd start filling with water. That low point would essentially trap the water in the low end and drag that deeper into the water and lay that into the bottom of the trench. The quite calm conditions in Myrangi Bay, so that led us to go with the slightly longer lengths and cutting down the number of joints we had to do on the seabed um, because that's the diver's job. Again, our subcontractor, New Zealand Dive and Salvage, did that. Well, my year and a half at, at Rosedale uh, personally has been um, very successful and rewarding time for me. Um, we managed to bring a marine team together um, out of a mix of experienced and inexperienced guys um, and overcome m the many, many challenges that we experience with marine work, uh, weather, tides, large plant, broken supply chains at times, all those sorts of things has actually brought everyone up to quite a very high and developed level, um, which is an enormous um, asset to McConnell Dow and also a testament to their devotion to the project, which has been fantastic for us.